Weekend Rental, episode 121. We are your gaming and geek culture podcast. As always, my name is Ryan. I'm joined by Andy. Hey. Biff. Nichiwa. As always, if you enjoy our content, head on over to geekade.com where you're going to find not only our podcast, but uh, content on video games, movies, music, comics, and so much more. Geekade.com, what's your geek? And uh, we're doing a buy, rent, burn. Starting it off. So if you're new to the podcast, not familiar, this is a, a segment of the it's podcast. Bye, bye, bye. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, so this is a segment of the podcast where we look at three games. Um, we play them all individually, and then we decide which one we would personally buy, rent, or burn. And by burn, we mean light on fire and dispose of properly. Um, we're doing something a little bit light tricky it on this fire go around. Dispose it properly. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're, we're we're doing something a little bit different this go around. We are this is gonna be a tough one. We are doing the Mario Bros. So we're looking Arios. at Super Mario Bros. on the NES. Uh, skipping two because that's not a real Mario game, and you all know it. Uh, and then we're going to Super Mario Brothers three, and then of course Super Mario World. Which, if you live in the United States, those are the three actual Mario Super Mario games in order. So. One three world. That's where we're at. Not the lost levels. That doesn't no, count. Not the actual Mario 2, because we didn't get that here. Not until Super Nintendo. Um I guess we usually talk about the games a little bit and then we'll move through and, and, and give our votes. But let's start with the classic, the OG Super Mario Bros. That dual cart that came on everybody's Nintendo with Duck Hunt. It's a classic. My nipples get hard just thinking about it. <laughs> Your nipples get hard often and easily. Oh, no, they do, don't they? Yeah. It's weird that you know that. I know everything. OG Super Mario is amazing. And so with any of these, though, before we get into one, there's going to be a lot of nostalgia just oh, this driving this whole conversation. Yeah. 100%. Decisions have already been made. We don't. I mean, we all know that. <laughs> Things yeah, things have already been decided. But man, what a what a game. What a I mean, starting out, it is so unconventional to the video games that we had that prior era. to this. Yes. You know? Where we were used to seeing the Pongs, anything on like the Atari twenty six hundred and you know, barely making out what things look like and it's all one color black and white or whatever and to see that you can actually control a character and control a character well and see that it looks like a person and <laughs> you don't know what these enemies look like but you know what i'm supposed to do something with them and and so just how games now have so many tutorials and it was kind of this playable tutorial where it's like, okay, well, you're going to run into this mushroom. Are you going to jump away from it? Or are you going to eat it and see what happens? And then, oh, wow. And it kind of forces you to do that quickly and then determine, okay, I got to jump on things and, and whatever. But, man, that just blew my mind as a kid. That was a game that just blew my mind. And when I first started playing it was black and white. So I had a black <laughs> and white TV and I thought I was, it was just one of those marketing things. When you look on the back of the box or you're just like, Whoa, you know, it's so colorful. I wish it would actually look like that. And then when my parents told me I could move my NES down to the actual living room and to see like Mario in color, that was, that was amazing. It was amazing. But such a good, good game. Tight controls as well, which for that kind of being the flagship of Nintendo, kind of their first go round, and to have the character play so well, yeah. well I think is very impressive. One of the earlier games where sensitivity as far as like button press 
played a major mm. factor too, like yeah. quick tap versus long tap that hadn't really been done or overused at that point. And running plus a jump. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think Biff, you touched on it perfectly. I think it was one of those, it was the, it was one of the earliest games of note to come out for the NES. And a lot of us had, <clears throat> had moved into the NES from the Atari and then from experience in the arcade where everything was one screen for the most part. And, you know, you learned about the backstory and the land you were in from the manual in an Atari game, but you didn't get the visual representation of that. And here you are with super Mario brothers where it didn't, I mean, it had a, it had an instruction booklet, everything did back then, but you didn't need it. Like you were in a world that kept expanding before you and you're told from this goofy little mushroom that there's a princess and another castle and there's clearly a bad guy. And I don't know. It just, it, it, it blew minds. It, it seems so simplistic nowadays and it is simplistic in, in the terms of these games, but the fact that you just kept running right and it kept coming at you and you actually felt as like a five or six year old that you were embarking on this journey across a giant kingdom to rescue a princess. And that was pretty awesome. Yeah. And the music, I mean, I can't think of, I mean, when you really sit back and think about that, like that first level, that yeah. song, like, Ages five through 50 probably know what that song is, even though sure. they maybe never even played this game before. You know, it's it's like the one the one song that's really crossed over to just like household knowledge. And that first warp pipe or pipe down to the underground too, like did it or did it like everybody yeah. knows those like <laughs> you beats like it's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, the the first uh, secret, you know in that level yes. too like that that's what really blew my mind like that you could run on top where the score is like what you know mm -hmm. and then yeah and the 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 pipes being interactive the fact that like they weren't just stationary obstacles they were things to teleport you to another part of the same level it was crazy yeah did you guys ever hit the first one up that hidden one up right at the beginning on accident or did you read about it? Did you hear about it? Like, how did you, how did that happen for you guys? I, I, had I got cousins. the knowledge. Yeah. I got yeah. the knowledge from somewhere. I don't know where, but yeah. But then there's always that. I mean, I assume you guys all had like the, the scenario where you were the guy with the knowledge showing somebody else for the first mm -hmm. time. And they're just like, Oh my God. And you're like, <laughs> I'm so cool right now. Yeah. It was awesome. There's a warping vine right here. What is this? Yeah. yeah. Having to walk around with that knowledge in our skulls is inconceivable in the day of like Google and smart devices <laughs> <laughs> and let's plays. We memorize that stuff. It was incredible. And you kind of touched on this, Ryan, you know, <clears throat> just the games were very simplistic even before Super Mario Bros. And so to not really to know, okay, Something happened. Somebody took a princess. There's a bad guy, a good guy, whatever. The very first time you get to that, like, end of world one, whatever, and you get to that first castle, did you feel like, oh, this is the end of the game? Like, mm -hmm. this is, I, th I think that's, that's exactly how I looked at it as well, where I was like, yeah. oh, wow, like, this was quick. And now here, here it is. Cause you're used to like not yeah. maybe seeing end of games, not really knowing. Yeah. Especially I think that was you such a like, weird experience. Yeah. Especially if you look at like its predecessors, right. Where like platforming games were starting to come into play, like games like jungle hunt, where it's like, yeah, it's this adventure and I'm clearly distinctively traveling through regions, but yeah, that's a, that's a three or four zone game. You know, it's if done right, that's over in two and a half minutes and in two and a half minutes, you haven't even completed the second stage of this game. It's it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, and the secrets thing I think is like, like Andy touched on was so mind blowing too. I mean, cloud kingdoms, mushroom lands, coin heavens, whatever we all called them. Sounds you know, like it, you're on drugs. <laughs> it does, but 
Well, and as a kid, I, I kind of was. And, you know, when you look at the source material, too, you know, we're talking about single screen games. Mario Bros. was a single screen game. I mean, this blew the doors off of a single screen arcade game yeah, uh, as a sequel or spin off. And yeah, just so smooth. I mean, any game with this smooth of scrolling at that point would have been amazing, but they nailed yeah. every aspect of it, too. Um, yeah. Just like when you get up to Bowser for the first time and like you hear those flames and you see the flames coming before you even see them like that's that was like really frightening to me. Like I was getting worried like immediately mm -hmm. didn't even know what was going to happen, you know. Then you well, get the one where he's throwing hammers at the same time. You're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, and let's talk about that, too. And like what that specific scenario did for the industry is like Bowser encounters. It's probably one of the best examples and earliest examples of choice. Right. I can I can take him out by hitting him in the nose with uh, fireballs. I can run under him. In some cases, I can jump on a platform, ride over him. Or I can just go Hail Mary, Kamikaze, run right through him, take the hit and kill him. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the amount of, it seems so simple, but the amount of freedom at that point in gaming in that one scenario was unbelievable. The very first time I beat that game, um, I think I was, I think I was around six or seven, somewhere around there, six. And uh, yeah, I, got every one up I could and every coin I could just so that I could get as many lives to get to the end. And I remember getting to the last like Bowser on nothing. And it was, I was still a big Mario and all of a sudden I was like, do I jump? Do I go under? No, I'm just going to ram right in, like <laughs> go yeah. right through. And yeah, it, I was, there was no strategy whatsoever. I'm just going <laughs> to run through them, get hit. <laughs> grab the hammer or grab the axe, axe. And, and take the win. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Hmm. Getting all nostalgic now. Yeah. <laughs> When's the last, last time that you've beaten the game? <clears throat> like you've really beaten it. Oh, probably yeah. within the last year. Yes. I mean, cause now that it's on virtual console, I'll fly through mm -hmm. it. I'm trying to think when the last time I actually like sat down and force myself to do a no warp run. And that probably hasn't been since <clears throat> got maybe t high school, you know, I, whatever reason Bring I got in a kick where I was like doing it, but yeah, I mean, it would be fun. It's, I think it'd be one of those situations where if all of us were in a room and like passing a controller around, that'd be the way to do it. Yeah. So what's a, what's your worst favorite, uh, enemy? Oh, I mean, Hammer Brothers are the easy pick. Gosh. I mean, I'm going to have to pick like that dickhead. I forget his name that throws out like the spike things. Like, I really hate that guy. Mm, yeah. Oh, the, is his it name's in the tip Toki? Of my tongue. Tuki? Maybe. Tanu not Tanuki. I think he's the suit. Yeah. It's not good. I mean, the flying dude. fish are also terrible just because they're mm -hmm. randomization. But bloopers, maybe. Too. I mean, can we we should probably at least touch on the bane of this game. And that is the underwater levels. It, it was the introduction blueprint and moment where every gamer instinctively learned that underwater levels forever would always be garbage that we wanted to avoid at all costs. But I mean, since 1985, they got slightly better, but they also got much worse. You yes. know? So like they did pretty good for the first attempt. Yeah, what yeah, was it like shortly after that Ninja Turtles and the underwater <laughs> and, yeah, you know, just help. all of those things. That's like, no, this is not yeah. good. Castlevania I love killed that. you instantly oh, yeah. if you touched water. <laughs> I love that. Um, you know, I found this out much later, but in the water world, you're just freaking out, swimming as fast as you can. But I learned that if you just walk on the bottom, nothing bugs you. And uh, hmm. so even the squids they'll like barely touch your head and you can still just like keep on walking mm -hmm. all the way across. Never nice. thought of that. But as a kid, you're just like, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was the first like controller chucking game where, yeah, my mom would take it away all the time. Cause I, 
yeah. lost my mind. And it, I feel like it was the game also that definitely led to the media frenzy over Nintendo thumb. Cause I distinctly remember having like crippling pain in my thumbs after like late night sessions of this game. <laughs> so it's a real thing. Well, let's move on to the second game. Talk about that. Super Mario Bros. 3. Grace. On what a game it is. What a you had a you had an overworld map. Koopa had children, which has since been written out of history. They're not his children. We don't know what they are. Nintendo lied to us, but <laughs> they were his children at the time. Um Doc, Did you, they really write it off? Yeah. I didn't know that. They've, they've changed that since. Yeah. It's I don't know. There's Nintendo's official stance is now that he didn't actually have those children. Adopted them. Weird. Yeah. Um Warp Whistles, The Wizard. Backgrounds, parallax scrolling. There's a lot Sick. here. There's a lot here. New power ups. Hidden things. So many hidden things. Bonus games. It was no saves. <laughs> yeah. It was the end of the NES. Like they milked every last bit they could out of this. And it showed and it, it has stood the test of time for that. Um Yeah. I don't know what you can really say about this game that hasn't already been said. It's one of the greatest, greatest games. It's beautiful. And yeah, what a jump from you know, one to two was weird. And then, yeah, three was just like everything that you pictured in one as a, as one a kid. from two, but didn't get right. Yeah. Like you pictured, you still had that like imagination mm -hmm. where you're, they didn't have to spell it out for you in the first game. And, and, but it was all playing through your head, but the third third game they were actually putting those things to the screen and I, th I think that was just it's so good and just mind blowing the first time I played that was just again I, apparently I think all games are short because I got to the end of like world one one I was like oh my gosh <laughs> I'm gonna beat the game oh wait there's way more well, okay <laughs> and, and I love stopped. how they slap you over the head with that too on because not all the worlds are that big but when you get to two two is like a two screen endeavor compared to one mm. you're like holy hell you know it's it, it's a lot it's a oh. lot right away yeah this one so I almost have no nostalgia for it you're a jerk you're not even human I know it's um I don't know what it was that I I rented it a few times I'm sure from the local store <laughs> but uh yeah it just like and my friends weren't really into it at that point I like I, the I, only kid that ever rented Super Mario Bros yeah, I know. straight from the store and I think I rented probably two more and I have a lot more memories of playing two and I think that was maybe part of it like I got three after that and I thought two was where that we were going with this and then they kind of went back to that to the stuff i'm that like was okay good. yeah well yeah but i didn't know that at the time you know like i'm just like well what are we doing here you know this is weird um we're having fun <laughs> damn yeah, it <laughs> yeah. i think i liked two a lot more than most people just because it was so weird and you know like i thought there was more secrets than there probably were because of the uh the uh shadow realm or whatever you'd use you know, right. to find the secret doors, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I just never, you know, this one didn't have the same like playground, like, Oh, find the warp whistles and stuff and secrets. Like the first one did for me, but mm. makes me sad. Yeah. This, uh, this is one of those games where like I had the neighbor kid cause I've never Nintendo at the time. And his dad was like, clearly a bit of a gamer also so when the new like big titles would come up for the nes he would drive to the nearest town that had a kmart you know and get them because we lived in a podunk town in the midwest and yeah i remember coming over and just like seeing that thing on the screen and i was like holy crap man and we'd like kick his dad off same thing happened with um uh 
the second Zelda game, which was a letdown, but we had to kick him off and like play. Well, this, now you uh, say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Finally. I still love it. Uh, and we just played this game forever. And then like, I don't know, this was like forever. The sleepover game, I think for most people, like you just, this is the game everyone gravitated towards, you know, it was, <clears throat> it was this nice trade off where you went back and forth. <clears throat> which is kind of important to touch on is in the first game, if you're playing two player, if the first player was good, Luigi wasn't seeing any action in three, they fixed it so that you complete a stage. It's the other player's turn. Mm -hmm. So it was a much more like cohesive experience. If you're doing two player Um, and just, yeah, it just, it, it was like a better graphical interpretation of everything you imagined one to be but it was just like clearly laid out, you know, in the story context, the castles, the dialogues, the uh, oh, music, uh, the bass, you know, those boss encounters with Bowser and the, the tunes in those fights. Yes. Uh, yep. So Love good. That. And then just that intimidation factor. Well, okay. Before I touch on that giant world, best world mm. ever. So much fun. Like just giant turtles and Goombas, but then, just that interpretation too of what you thought was world eight going to Bowser's castle. And then like realizing that it was just like the opening gates, which appeared to be the pits of hell. Uh, and it's just like magma and like hands that pull you down and stupid hands. So intimidating as a kid though, you're like, Oh, I'm never going to do this. Not possible. So damn good though. Like, I mean, this is something that I just, often forget about is just the nod to the Mario franchise right at the, you know, if, if you jump on a level that someone already completed and then yeah. you battle it out and just Play that nod game. to like yeah. the original Mario brothers, which that, that pissed me off all the time anyways, because oh, yeah. my brother would be like, Oh yeah. And then I would be losing yep. lives and I'm like, you're a jerk. Stop doing it. And you keep on doing it. Yeah, yeah, lose all your he hard earned power up cards, right? Yeah. Yes, he was a and, jerk. Still and is. And that too, like the end level thing where you earned the card to like get um power ups. Like you get three cards and you get lives and stuff. And like mastering that in itself was like a game within a game. Yeah, had more strategy at least. Yeah. When to use your power ups and when not to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It might be oh, the first man. example. All that stuff of a, is in my head. It might be the first example of what I would consider to be like a perfect game. To be honest. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if we took the nostalgia lens off, if we'd see brokenness. Because I I've never seen it. I've never seen like, yeah, this is you know they didn't put this together well. Yeah. I don't know. I've never heard anybody say it. there's there's definitely some brokenness to it. I've never seen it. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest complaint you can make about it is like you said, the no built in save and then just with the way it pushed the NES, the the first like 10 lines or so of pixels on that right side um, always breaking on the NES version. You know, when you play the the all stars version, that's gone. Um but yeah, there was definitely some flaw in that, but not enough to make you not want to do it. Right. Like it was picking it apart. It's a beautiful game. <laughs> it is a beautiful game and I love it so damn much. Well, and it's so interesting too, because isn't it, they've kind of said since that it's supposed to be a play, like it's all up on a stage, right? No, oh, really? I think the whole game is theoretically supposed to be a play. It's the curtain. So that's why they're not right. as children. Yeah, I see. That's why you can go behind the curtain. Yeah. Get them horp whistles. <laughs> no whistles? Horp whistles. Oh, horp. <laughs> Definitely sound like some other whistles. Uh, well, let's move on to the next one. Uh, the final one in this Byron Burn. That is Super Mario World. Andy's the nipples just got hardened. The debut <laughs> pack in Mario game. For the Super Nintendo and arguably really the only Mario game because Yoshi's Island is a bastard offshoot that deserves no love. Uh, Super Mario it says World. Mario World 2 right in the title. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Bullshit. It's false marketing. (laughs) I don't care if there's an FX chip. It's garbage. Uh, No, it's a fine game. It is just not what I would consider in the vein of. I would consider Yoshi's Island the same as I would consider Mario 2 in in North America. They're they're fine in their own right, but they vary too much from tradition to be. Castlevania 2. So. I mean, Andy, this is your baby. I'll let you kind of talk about why yeah, you love this so, one so much. I, it is kind of weird because I first came to this one not having a Super Nintendo, having a Sega Genesis instead. So I should be on the other side of the fence, really Reagan on this game. But uh, and maybe I was back then. But in retrospect, I had a cousin who had it. So I played it a lot there. And oh my gosh, like, and then that's probably part of the reason with you know, number three, not being a so because I've played this one a lot more, probably, you know, um, maybe even before I got to three, I don't even remember. But uh, yeah, this game, the graphics were amazing right out of the gate for being, you know, right on Super Nintendo. We're going to circle back to that, but OK. Um, Just some of the, the effects to it, like that first boss with the tilting lava. Yes. You know, that, that was awesome. I mean, it just, and the, the fences that you would go behind, that blew my mind. Um, Yeah, it's, you know, you got the Star Worlds, you got a whole bunch of stuff. The cape, I like. I don't know if some people do not like it as much, but. I'm a cape fan, I think. Yeah. I think it's top three power-ups in the series, yeah. It, I still can't figure out how to fly with that stupid thing oh, dude that's how i cleared the star world all you gotta learn is how to like power fly off the screen forever and everything's your bitch at that point well you half the time you need to do that just to get to the star world right right or sacrifice a yoshi which is also yeah. as satisfying as it sounds <laughs> yeah no well, one I mean, else that's... like killing him i loved killing him <laughs> i mean yoshi was pretty cool like that was the ultimate power up yes for me anyway it just because and then, like Sonic, not necessarily dying from it, just losing your Yoshi, and then you're scrambling mm-hmm. in the whole hectic area that you got hit in the first place just to get him back. It's the save a power up box, like the on deck box, pretty impressive yeah. and yeah. innovative. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mostly agree. I think it was a good pack in. I, I don't stand by it was the showpiece. I don't think it pushed the Super Nintendo hard enough, even for Nintendo. I could say that the game itself in the levels, I could get behind like this is adequate enough for your first entry on a new console. That overworld though looks like butt. Um it's always bothered me that even from the get-go, Mario's like one pixel off being center of the dirt road that he's supposed to be on. I've never gotten <laughs> over that. Still pisses me off. It looks. A side wh- note: what, what do you think is the showcase of the SNES? Just graphically? Yeah, just for a reference. I mean, well, stun well, I mean, effects. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, you. I would say you know when you get to the Donkey Kong games, but if you're talking without FX chips, I mean that's tough to say. I think there's a lot of games that pushed it hard. Um, Castlevania, but, Super Castlevania, even, Super Metroid. But like 91, though, I mean, that's the sure. But, you know, Sega leaned into the fact that this kind of looked like just a slightly better version of Mario three and and actually sold a lot of Genesis is <laughs> Genesis, yeah. Genesis and Genesis. Sega CD oh. consoles because of the, you know, like they were able to say, hey, look at this. Like, this is not. And that's not to say it's a bad it's got a distinct art style. It's it's good. It's cohesive. It just. I don't know. It just didn't wow me in the way that it maybe could have, or it, I guess it's diminished when I was a kid. It still wowed me, but it's diminished over the years. You know, when I look back, it's like, yeah, that there was some rough stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it, aside from that amazing overworld, the fact that they took what was, you know, stages from three, turned it into a giant massive world all on one map. 
you know, like you said, the the alternative routes, the secrets within secrets, like you took everything from one that you loved and three that you loved and just compounded it. It added the Yoshi coins. It added Star World warps. It added mini bosses. Um, yeah, I, it just. <clears throat> as a game, it's easier to blow through, I think, than most of the mainline uh, Mario games like it's it's not a difficult game to get through in an hour or so or two, um, especially if you know what you're doing. But the depth really came into and the replayability really came into all the extras that they had packed in there and the things you had to, because again, no internet still, you know, this is all playground chat. This is all Nintendo power. This is, um, yeah, it was, you know, like a lot of people, this was the first game that you got because it came with your Super Nintendo and you were more than happy to play it every day after school for months. And even after you got your next few games, you still came back to it. And that says a lot about this game, even though I tend to favor others in the series more. It's hard to argue that this isn't a, a nearly perfect blueprint for every platform game to follow. Yeah. Well, and this one had, the, I think, the most, you know, the, some of those levels in previous games where, you know, there's a cloud guy throwing shells at you or there's a sun chasing you or, you know. This one mm-hmm. definitely had the most of that where there's a big fish or, you know, a whole bunch Weird of sumo guy. Right. A lot of different level specific stuff that w- was really varied, I thought. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the once you were able to access the big switches and yes. realize that those affect levels across the game already, like that was that was super cool. And they they took the dreaded underwater world and in some cases dare i say almost made them fun <laughs> um so that's an accomplishment in its own still i'd still rather play any other level but some of them mm-hmm. were not bad yep yeah. and the keys the secret keys the oh man so i got a question for you guys um how do you feel about the levels well, like ghost house levels where you don't know which door to go in yeah. Even like in the original, you you had those Bowser castles where the levels would repeat sometimes. Sure. You didn't pick the right. Like, do you like that in Mario games, or is that just a waste of time in your mind? No, I'm a pretty big fan of that. Like, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. It was it was so distinct to that game at the time. Like, just something we'd never seen. Downright creepy with that little simple melody. Um, the big boo was terrifying. Yeah, I liked. I liked that they, that they took like a 30 second level and turned it into something you had to play 45 times to find all three exits. Like, I think that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Found it frustrating. Like it just, yes, it's frustrating, but I felt more that it was pointless. Yeah. I hate, especially games like that where it's just not clear, you know, there isn't like a secret marking to look for, or, you know, a pattern to look for. And in that, that frustrates me when I'm like, I just want to get through this so I can see more of the game. I want to, I don't want to get stuck in this like demo world where they are trying different things or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But super Mario world for me was, um, I played it much later in life. And so I don't have a lot of nostalgia to it. Um, and it, it was a game that I didn't, really understand as far as i mean not that there's much that you have to understand but just some of the power-ups like the um the cape or whatever you call it the blanket or whatever um just those kind of things where you're used to yeah the the super blanket the snuggie uh, the the super (laughs) snuggie uh um yeah where you're used to like the the tanuki suit or you know those things that i don't know you're just kind of grew up using those power-ups and so anytime you change that and they're not essentially the same minus the fire flower Mm. it's kind of a bummer where you're trying to relearn a game or trying to let go of the past and embrace what's new and um i'm glad i experienced it later in life where it is it's it's fantastic music's amazing graphics 
I mean, it's hard to compare anything to, you know, 16 bit stuff where that, that look is so good and is timeless. And even in today's world, they're mimicking that in new gen stuff where everything's this retro look, retro look. And, um, it just looks so good. So good. Well, let's, let's touch on something you said there too, about how, you know, enjoying what's old, but embracing what's new. And and they did that in a very innovative way. Um, in that, that game has two, two jumps, right? You got the traditional, everybody knows, run fast and then traditional jump. But then there's also a second jump button that does a spin jump that opens up a world of possibilities. It makes a cool noise too. (laughs) Right. When it comes to, when it comes to uh, attacking these levels, right? Because suddenly a spiked enemy or a saw is not the immediate threat you once thought it was when you realize that you can just like spin hop off of any obstacle Mm -hmm. in your way. Mine is fire. Um, and that gets into some pretty like pro gamer moments, right? Where you figure out when and how to use that and exploit the game in ways that they intended you to, but they tried to make it seem like you were a genius for figuring out. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the genius of it. And the level design is, is really where this game shines is <clears throat> the level design is probably unmatched in, in any other game in this series. And there's dolphins, which you can eat with Yochi, which I really <laughs> like, which they removed in the Game oh, Boy version. Oh, I didn't know you reason. could eat. I didn't know you could eat them. Oh, yeah, oh, for I never sure. Tried 100%. That. Wow. Dolphin free tuna. F that. Yoshi's all yeah. about it. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer, though. Like. Most of the new ones, I just I don't think they really have secrets or. Other end exits or you know like all the secrets are like oh good job here's a coin you know a big red coin or something like that well in the the new series like does that weak ass thing of like no it's here but we'll just like fade out the background so you can see it It, that's not the same yeah it's not even innovative it's just kind of lazy yeah if it doesn't have a sharp edge to it you know you can walk through it and yeah it's Mm -hmm. yeah it's a, a solid ass game. Well, now that we profess our love for all of these games, I guess we have to decide which ones we would personally buy, rent, and in this case, unfortunately, have to burn. Um, even though we may not want to. So mm. Andy gets to start us off. I think I'm going to buy uh, Mario All Stars plus Mario World. Well, that's a good call. Can, yeah, the better <laughs> buy. Yep. Jeter. Uh, I'm going to go with Mario World for my buy. Um, even though I didn't own it, I still had some nostalgia for it because of my cousin. And uh, yeah, I thought it was, it, it had that same like, oh my gosh, blowing minds discoverability type thing mm-hmm. that the first one did just a, on a much prettier level. Um. And my rent's going to be uh, the original just because the nostalgia, I just can't, I just can't, I can't turn that away. Are you just trying to create a controversial stay tuned audience for the next podcast? We're a two piece. It's the <laughs> oh my Ryan and Biff show. <laughs> yeah. Know about this. Say it. Say what you're going to burn. You monster. <laughs> I'm going to burn Mario 3. Um, no! And, and The Wizard's a bad movie. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's also not true. <laughs> what it's the is best commercial on? ever. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that hurt a lot, personally. The deeply was offended me. <laughs> okay. I don't like where you took that. that but you <laughs> Oh, gosh. Breaking um, the wizard. I think I'm going to go with my buy is Super Mario Brothers 3. That's kind of a give me. Uh, It's it's just, it's a perfect game. Always will be. I don't care what anybody says. (laughs) If you say anything against it, I'll cut you. Um, I mean, no, I won't. But I will. Uh, Rent. 
Rent is going to be Super Mario Brothers. OG. Mm. Uh, the nostalgia. <laughs> yes, I look at the game as being good. Um, there's that, that piece that's like, man, it really set up so much for gaming and set up so much for platforming and the whole Mario genre. And so that's going to be my rent. I'm probably going to be the only kid that rents it, honestly. Um, <laughs> from starting, do you have that Super Mario Brothers game? <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> Um and yeah, Burn is going to be Super Mario World, just not really connected to it. It's still a really good game. Um, but I would much rather go through Super Mario Brothers 3 many times over before I touch Super Mario World. So all right, Ryan, what do you got? Line three. It is perfection, as Biff stated, and I guess I did earlier in the podcast too. Um <clears throat> The nostalgia factor, the the leap in gameplay, the overall package. I love that game. Um, I'm gonna rent World. Um, World's real good. I played a ton of that. I mean, it's debatable which one I played more through a World. Maybe World, just because I didn't actually have an NES until I was older, but. Yeah, it's a, it's a damn impressive game, and I I don't get as excited about going back to it now as as I do three. Um, that doesn't mean that it didn't really captivate me as a kid. It it certainly did, and I think, like I said, the level design is second to none. Um, and then I'm gonna burn one. Um, Isn't I still that go back painful to just it. to say though. It is. It is painful. I still go back to it and run <laughs> like through like any it, of these. Yeah, it, it's just a little too basic. Um, but that said, it's still a good like thirty minute run through if you want to pop it in and play start to finish using warps and yeah. Well, nobody picked one, so yeah. Hi. I mean, so I think we you know had some division here, but I think we can all come together here and uh, nope, a late edition here with. Super Mario 64 and just put that at the bottom. All right. Yep. It's officially a two man podcast. Join us for episode 122. All right. It's uh, Biff and Ryan. And who's this only <sighs> guy? We burned him, is what no, happened. We're, no, we're now. No. <laughs> yeah. Instead of the games, now we burn the person. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Talking 64 on this steak. podcast. What are we doing here? Shenanigans. All right. That's another Byron burn in the books. That was a tough one. It was a nostalgic one. <laughs> the toughest, maybe? I was debating, had we done this one before? Have we done? I thought maybe we had talked about it. Maybe. I, I'm sure we have. We've probably repeated ourselves, but, yeah. And I wonder if we could go back and see if anything changed, but. No, probably nothing. Speaking of the 64. Nope. You know, like, it just, <laughs> just the more people I encounter um, that are just slightly younger than me. They, they know I collect video games, play video games. Where does it always go? Or lately, where has it always been going? Hey, you have the Nintendo sixty four. Wow, that was that's one of the greatest systems. I'm like, oh Ooh. my gosh, <laughs> these have to be people in their thirties. Yeah, I, I had this 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 coworker's husband down in the game room, and he was kind of looking around. He's like, um call yourself a gamer and you're missing one of the greatest systems of all time. And I was like, no, I got them. <laughs> like I'm, I'm good. <laughs> no, that that's 64. Where, where's it at? I'm like, mm -mm, that's no. when you keep a spare controller for it in your closet. You just shove up that person's ass. Like you like that tribe dent of hell. Here you go. Get out of here, uh, man. It just, I don't know, maybe it's that season of my life, but I've had so much like Nintendo 64 conversations and people are like, why wouldn't you like it? It's great. It's amazing. <laughs> I I distinctly <laughs> remember like taking that point many years back now of just looking at that thing, being an avid collector, still buying games constantly at that point and just looking at that 64 collection and trading it all. 
and the 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 satisfaction in never looking back and having no regrets on that has been so worth it. It's just the 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 sixty four is the shit stain <laughs> in the retro gaming timeline. It's just <laughs> it's abysmal. I'm sorry, N sixty four kids. Nobody loves you. Oh. Man, get a I'm PlayStation like a real person. Uh, I I'll probably I had agree, a sixty four. Yeah, I had I'll, a sixty four, no PlayStation, but I I can't go back. I can't. There, even I I've tried the Golden Eye, and I've tried to like tell myself to love it, and it just looks like dog crap. And it controls all like over dog the crap. screen. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just like that era of 3D, even on the PlayStation, in most cases, and especially the Saturn, where they had not figured out 3D controls in a 3D space. Like, there's no recovering from that. Like, we've moved, we've moved past that as a civilization. Like, you just cannot go back and enjoy those things. Yeah, I mean, hmm. Sorry, I took us down the 64 it, rabbit it, hole. It, 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 I, you, the people that like really enjoy that, the 64, you sit there and they're like, oh yeah, I'm having fun. I'd like, there has to be a part of you that has to be like, no, this isn't as good as I remember it. Like, if you don't feel that way at all, you're lying to yourself or you're not like accepting reality. Mm-hmm. Well, and like I've always said, I have a very hard line with early 3D that pretty much stops at the Dreamcast. And there's even some bad stuff on the Dreamcast where that is the minimum for Mm. polygon count and adequate controls that I can tolerate. And beyond that, like you're just looking through nostalgia goggles, like even my beloved metal gear solid pretty rough these days in its original incarnation. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, but even if it controls good, I mean, Mario Kart 64 controls pretty, pretty well, especially for that. How dare you? And How dare you lie to our audience? The, but it lo- it looks it looks pretty bad. It still looks pretty bad. It's yeah, yeah. I mean, I everyone knows I'm an avid 64 hater. But yeah, there's just nothing. Uh, oh my gosh! Paper change Mario, the subject. Change paper, the subject. Paper Mario is maybe the one game that holds up best, right? Super simple, good story. I can go back to that. And play. Yeah, that's why they yes. use polygons in that. that that's <laughs> the best the part. Polygon, so. But yeah, let's let's change the subject to another nostalgia fueled topic. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the reveal trailer. Fucking amazing! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Kawabunga Collection coming to PS4 and PS5. No, nobody saw this. Just me. Oh yeah, I did. Oh yeah, it's all the games: Game Boy, Arcade, NES, Super Nintendo. The fighters, I, both versions, they're all there. One convenient package. You're just missing the tiger handhelds. That's it. Yeah. And you don't have to buy the $400 fucking arcade one up anymore. They're there. You get the arcade games. That is Are one hell of a graphical collection. upgrades. No, at all. No, no remasters or anything. No, maybe there. I'm hoping there's like a library of sorts and an info sheet, but. Either way, this is like every pixel version of the TMNT games put out on hardware. Although I might have missed it. Who's releasing this? Um, Konami. I might have missed it, but was Hyperstone Heist in there? Yep. Okay. Okay. I did so, miss it then. Yeah. So yeah, it is it's... literally everything. And I'm guessing they're doing this to drive a buzz for the new one that drops later this year, right? Like the yeah. forget Shredders something. Um, but yeah, yeah, thirteen games. I think it said. Yes, super pumped about this. I mean, those are those are some of the best couch co op games of all time, and to have them all in one convenient package, and just get to enjoy some of the weirder like offshoots from like the Game Boy, and I would even argue that first game, even though it's pretty nostalgic on the NES, is kind of a bastard offshoot, right? Like it's not the mm-hmm. game we all wanted; it's the game we tolerated. The Manhattan Project. Love that one. Doesn't get enough praise. So it'll be there. Does this get released? <clears throat> that I did not see. Probably soon, because I think the I other one comes so. out this summer. So, yeah. Physical edition. Is there a physical edition? It said 
<laughs> well, this is Damn, off of... That. Let's see. Konami has announced TG, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Kaobunga collection for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, oh. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC Steam. Oh, it's on everything. It will yeah. launch in 2022 in both physical and digital editions for thirty nine ninety nine. Well, I will be buying a physical edition then. Yeah, where and when? Is this, this isn't like a limited thing though, right? No, 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 it'll be up. Okay, good. Because I hate that. Yeah, it's not good. Nintendo, sell it for six months and pull it from everything, you bastards. Um, Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. I didn't. I just saw the PlayStation trailer, which I guess they're not going to show the other consoles. So that makes sense. <laughs> what are you going to buy? Let <clears throat> me switch. My kids and I play that the most. Mm-hmm. Or PS4. I would, I would assume, like that many games. Like some of them wouldn't have been Konami. Like thirteen yeah. games all by Konami. That's pretty crazy that they did all that. Well, some of them were technically Ultra. Well, sure. It's but. not Konami. <laughs> Otherwise, they couldn't have put out as many games. So, Right. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nice to see Konami putting out games, even if they're nostalgic cash grabs, but opening up their library is pretty sweet. <laughs> How about they uh, take a look at their uh, turbo graphics and HUDs and acquisitions <laughs> and do some of that, too, because you're sitting on some gold there, Konami. In addition to TMNT. Oh, yeah, I don't know. They just did them. I, I'm surprised that they just did them all. Like, not like, right. here's the NES trilogy in one bundle, and you know? Yeah. Yeah, and for that price, 40 bucks. I mean, as far as mm-hmm. those collections go, and you know it's going to be dirt cheap after. But yeah, I hope they do. I'll have to look and see if they do like a weird, like, cool collector's edition steel book, like shell case or something. A shell of a deal. <laughs> shell of a good time. <laughs> they don't. If, You'd if see you, it on shelves and be like, "What the shell?" Yeah, it's amazing. And if Best Buy doesn't deliver it in thirty minutes, it's free. <laughs> That's a joke. I don't know if you kids know, but there used to be a thing where if they didn't deliver your pizza in thirty minutes, it was free. A lot, a lot of people got in car accidents. They don't do that. So many people. They, have, they haven't done that in a long time. You're welcome, <laughs> children. Isn't that that was Little Caesars thing, right? Or Domino's? I don't remember who started I think it. It was Little it was Caesars. Domino's or what? Well, yeah, and the thing is, like everybody picked up on it, and then it became like a huge deal. And another kid died for his pizza. So do something. Take away the thirty minute. Now it's order it and get it in two, three hours whenever they decide to bring you cold <laughs> pizza. Dude, you know what? I should tell the story. So we get that Domino's near us and we'll do like the carry out all the time. You know, they got like the $6 deals. You just like order whatever items. Anyway, my, my wife goes over there because it's literally like a block. Man. Gets her order, comes back. And I was like, yeah, you didn't get the brownie. Like my daughter wanted like the brownie cookie bites. So they didn't include it. So she goes back and complains. And I'm like, I'm like, well, either get a refund or get the brownie if it's just sitting there or whatever. And she was pissed. She comes home. She's like all pissed off. She's like, yeah, I didn't even give me an apology. I was like, if you don't have it made, just give me a discount. And the lady's like, okay. And did it. And then like walked out the door. And then anyway, I, I get an email later. Um, not only did they refund it, they refunded the entire like $40 order. Wow. Missing brownies. And my wife's like, oh, I'm not mad about the apology anymore. You got free meal. So. <laughs> or did they, did Thanks you write those. them a letter or did they just. No, we walked over there. It's like you oh. ordered online. No, I mean, afterwards, when you received, like, the $40 paid for. Oh, no, they just you credited said they it back. Oh, okay. And I got an email saying they had canceled my entire order. So I was like, that doesn't make sense. And then we looked, and yeah, sure enough, they refunded the whole damn thing. I bet there's something, like, in the uh, system that if you have to do some sort of, like, discount or something, then they'll do some check or something in the back end. Uh, and discount so it's probably just easier thing. to just, like, cancel the entire thing up front. I'm guessing it's not the person in the store doing that. It's probably something in, you know, their code that's doing that. Yeah. Either way, life hack. Want free Domino's? <laughs> order a bunch of things and don't get one and then complain about it. Free food. Well, Wild Wings is the same place. Like, or- same same thing when you just, if you 
say, no, I actually ordered a Diet Coke, not a regular Coke. And the managers are so fast to be like, <laughs> hey, I heard there was a problem here. I'm going to get those mozzarella sticks on the house for you. No problem. Okay. No problem. Right. <laughs> and it's like, no, this is it, I, it was just Diet Coke. No big deal. Just <laughs> no, 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 no problems. No problems. I'll get those mozzies for you. <laughs> Yeah. You're so quick to get the manager down. <clears throat> it's funny how little that sort of stuff happens to my family because we're like the people that if it can go wrong, it's going to anytime you eat out. Like, I don't know. We're like, we're cursed anywhere we go. Like orders don't get put in, like things don't show up. Right. And not, not only does that happen, which is laughable, but we seldom, if ever get an apology and or discount. It's kind of amazing. We're just uh, schlubs. Actually, every time I've gone out with you, it's experienced something. Like, what do you mean? Well, my birthday, the beer, the server. You remember that whole thing? That the oh, guy the guy? Was, yeah, he was yeah. an idiot. Where I don't know what beers we have on. Yeah, I'm like, do you have any IPAs? What kind? Ah, <laughs> oh, I couldn't tell you. I'm like, but no idea. The server. Do you have Budweiser? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know what that is. One, one second. <laughs> Didn't he we'll also right like back. dump a glass of Coke or water across the table too? And like, put yeah. it down? I forget. Yeah. It was the curse of Ryan with us, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we've been to. Pizzoli's, um, you know, that whole breadstick fiasco that you that's did. All, that's all on you, bud. <laughs> it's all on you. Listen, nobody, bro. nobody Listen, has bro. besmirched the ultimate restaurant of all time though, which is of course doc smokehouse. No matter uh, who's in attendance, that's always perfect. Uh, that no, the one time our last last hurrah where they were running out of turkey and all that okay, stuff. Okay, that's true. And the waitress that probably did put drop, some panic. Yeah, she did drop a bunch of glass, so that was. She was checking me out. I'm probably I'm positive that that was the case. Um, <laughs> speaking of checking 100% it out, that happened. Awkward segue. Well, there's a demo for the Kirby game that's coming out. Anybody download this? I haven't. All right. Me either, but my kid did. Um, I watched him play it. The look on his face. Wake him up. And, get him on here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got to say, I watched him go through about half of it. I'm real excited about that game. That game is very adorable. The, the whole like idea of like, they just sort of, Mario Odyssey Kirby is kind of right. And it's right in an incredibly charming and appropriate way. Instead of why did they F up my Mario from Mario Odyssey kind of way? Um, yeah, he, he, he adored it. Um, he's very excited now that the game is coming out in a couple weeks. I gotta say, I'm pretty pumped. This is a pretty good potential leap in direction. I feel like, um, they kind of took Kirby recently. I mean, Epic Yarn is its own thing, right? But, like, I feel like the last few games have just been, like, a very bare-bones afterthought, like, G version of mm. a platform game, which is is fine. Like, that's what Kirby kind of is, I guess. But, like, it kind of lost some of its heart and soul. And I think this kind of brings some charm back in in a pretty exciting way. And it looks nice, too. Good-looking game. So, like, the new the new big power-ups or whatever where it's like you swallow a car you become a car yep like the the mario odyssey stuff that you're talking about are th- is it like just to, to do clear like a small section of a level or is it like this is going to be the level yeah like surprisingly it's, i'd say it meets that good balance of like yeah you do that because po- the car one is one you run into right away almost um and yeah it's a it's a it's a substantial section of that level then where you're progressing through and it's not just like a cheap gimmick um or it doesn't overstay its welcome it's just kind of it changes the way you go through that level and it's pretty freaking cool sure yeah that's <coughs> excuse me that's the 25th that one comes out is that right yeah it's pretty soon i know that so yeah i'm excited for that i think I think that might be one to grab if you're one of those people that's like, ah, Kirby's a kid's game and I'm too old for that. I think this is, I think this is going to strike that balance of it's fun for everyone, regardless, um, instead of just for kids, but it's definitely going to be a home run. You know, we got a family of kids at home and everybody wants to couch co-op and play this thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be 
云天。Plus, I mean, car curb. Can't beat that. <laughs> Speaking of beating that, Russia invaded you. No, I'm just. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. There's a good deal in support of the. Uh, um, so this is kind of all happened since we recorded last, but everyone's well aware that uh, things are going on across the world, which are sad. Our hearts go out for those people. Uh, nobody should have to be in that situation. Um, and uh, we're, of course, talking about the invasion of Ukraine and the uh, impressive fight that that little country has put up and uh, the tenacity of its people. And to support them, HIO, which they always do, um, is kind of the hotbed for... Um, bundles and charity bundles that focus on hot topic issues and they've done a bundle for Ukraine that is available it will be it will be done by the time that this episode airs but i think it's it's probably got 6 or 7 days left as we record 991 pieces of software a lot of them are games uh just $10 minimum they do encourage that you uh you pay more um but you know, it's highly unlikely that you could make use or play or interact with all of these things, but just some of the heavy hitters off the bat, you know, you're getting Celeste, you're getting a short hike, you're getting um, Skatebird, super hot, um, just a strong list of like 10 games up front that any one of them on their own is worth the $10, not to mention the fact that you're getting all of them plus you know, the joy of digging through and finding else, you know, what else you might possibly like if you've got the time to do so. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a no brainer for PC, PC owners, really. And I'm probably the only one who's downloaded it. Yeah, I, I got the last did, one. Oh, did you get it? No, oh, I didn't. Oh. Just raised my head okay. to stretch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I I'm just always blown away with like how much you're in tune with like PC stuff and you know, you're like, hey, dude. Tune. I know, but just you know that that's something that I don't even think about. It doesn't even cross my mind. So yeah. it's pretty impressive that you're just ultra aware of deals and what's what's available, and I'm feel like a turd every time i talk to you guys yeah well, i mean and the hio bundles are nice like in the context of our podcast where we're very retro heavy i mean it tends to be those more indie um and you know retro styled games that kind of take the forefront so. yeah i think there's like some cross fade or cross something game that must be like a good 16-bit genesis style rpg that sure andy would love oh yeah i think i i tried playing that a little bit on game pass for a while okay it was okay it was more yeah. of an action rpg but yeah uh you need that turn-based goodness huh yeah 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 but i mean it's 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 a crazy bundle um all the proceeds are going to the two main charities um that are ukrainian based I think one helps children and one is more medical assistance. So all good stuff. I mean, it's worth throwing 10 bucks at, even if you're not going to download it. Cause what else can we do to help from America besides go to the Ukrainian embassy and get signed up as a volunteer soldier. But I don't think my wife would let me do that. So. Well, my wife signed me up. Oh, she's like, she's like, let me, let me sign you up. Uh, I got it. You don't it's need a card carrying a member of the NRA. You're going on this thing. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let's do it. I have a suggestion for a future, future podcast uh -huh. topic. I think Andy should teach us about RPGs and the difference between. Oh boy. Action turn base. Cause I don't even know. I just. I have no idea. Sometimes I I read a description. And it's like this is a turn based RPG. I was like, I have no idea what that <laughs> even means. So one of these days, you should school us, and I'll have to get into a very comfy chair to to hear what the difference is. Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. tough because I mean everything's an RPG now. Is <clears throat> I mean, Horizon is technically an RPG to some extent. You know. 
Yeah, Give us the history of RPGs. That's what we need. Do we? <laughs> oh, now I'm curious, though. I want to love them. I really do want to mm. love them. But boy, I get it, to have an experience. I, I'm i like blocking myself out from them now. Like I watched that PlayStation thing and saw the Turtles thing. I saw that was awesome. And then there was like two Square Enix things at the end. That's like, oh, that's cool. But never going to play that. Never going to have time to do it. So I'm just, I'm kind of ignoring all of that now. Yeah. Do you really have, be honest, do you really get joy not actually playing a game and just pushing a button to oh, yeah. kill something? Yeah. Well, I also like clicker games. Have you ever played any of those? No. Oh. Those are not technically really games. Um, he he like, sits around his office, flicks the tip of his penis. Yeah, <laughs> sort of the same. <laughs> Still there. It's basically, <laughs> it's, it's basically like numbers and bars going up, and then you're mm. like, "Oh, yes, the this bar has reached the end of that bar, so now it starts over, and now the number went up, and I'm satisfied because of that for some yeah. reason." Yeah, that's a sick. That's a sick satisfaction that I never developed. Like a Pokemon game. Do with You're not going to actually control your character and fight. It's the strategy whatever. though, right? Like that's what the hook is, is like the strategy and the understanding and the yeah outclassing. Po- it's like, it's like the chess of video games. Pokemon is also a collection thing too. You know, that's on top of all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like Final Fantasy. I just want to love that. I want to love the NES Final Fantasy. I get to a stupid town or outside of a town and someone wants to battle me. I was like, I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> you ever played Dragon Warrior? I push a button and the guy just like walks forward and then walks backward, walks forward. I was like, this sucks. Did you, did you play so Dragon I, Warrior on NES? No, no. That one's rough. I think you'll get further in that. Like I have an easier time getting into that one than I do. Final I just want to love them so much just because everyone else does. And, Sounds like you're talking about a puppy. You just want to like squeeze. <laughs> well, I want Andy to get me to love RPGs. Mm. I don't think but you have enough spare time possible. to love RPGs. Like, do you want to play one game yeah. every two years? No, that sounds terrible. Right. Do they have short RPGs? No. Nope. You might like, you might like, act. I mean, Diablo is an RPG. Link's Awakening. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you like Diablo, that's... That's love that. pretty RPG. Yeah, but I don't just walk forward, push X, push X. Right. You don't like turn-based RPGs, which I'd argue most. Is that turn-based? See, I need someone yeah. to teach me these turn-based things. Turn-based is like when you whack somebody with a stick and then you wait for them to smack you back before you can hit them again, which is there's bullshit. A menu. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way you'd do that. Oh, I had more Ukraine stuff. I don't feel like I can segue back into that. Oh, now. no. Bring it back <laughs> to Ukraine. <laughs> Let's talk about... Like a sick RPG right I've now. Got, I got no transition here either. Bandcamp. Everybody's heard of it? Yes. Yeah. So it's like yep. the the open source platform for independent artists to put out their works with the least amount of money not going back to them. It's a good thing, right? Epic bought it. Epic Epic Games owns That's really Bandcamp random. now. Is why? why? I someone told me that they also acquired and own the rights to harmonics. Really? I don't yeah, know that if was that's a while true. Ago. So maybe they're thinking like, well, we already own rights to like guitar heroes. So if we had a platform that was full of music that we also now own, I don't know. I don't understand why they're doing it. That's a really random move. Because Bandcamp is one of those platforms that is like genuinely appreciated. By almost everyone, and especially the the users and industry that leans on it, so it's a very strange thing for a video game focused company, which has a big ownership from Tencent also, um, to acquire Bandcamp for some reason. Actually, go ahead and head over to Bandcamp and <laughs> take a listen to Biff. Give me some money, thank oh. you. Biff's banjo EP. <laughs> 
The banjo, Biff's banjo EP. How y'all doing? Make sure you do it on Friday, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't know. I just, I just thought it was, like, out of the blue, right? Yeah, it, it's strange, but I wonder if it's kind of because of the reputation that, that it has. You know, it has more of a customer friendly, like the people that like Bandcamp are very passionate about Bandcamp. So if you get those people and their data, like <laughs> you can do a lot with that because uh, you tie into your brands with something that's more favorable. But it's true. <clears throat> yeah. Just get, just throw the albums right on your battle pass. <laughs> I just hope it's not like a thing where they're hoping to exploit smaller artists and give them like oh, they will. shitty royalties, like user tracks and like Epic games and stuff. But, That's happening. That's coming. But what is Epic's games anymore? Right? Like they're Fortnite. So. And unreal, but yeah, which that's huge too. That's huge. Yeah, it's 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 a weird thing. Like, I've been curious to see what happens if they just kind of like, you know, because they did the normal thing of like, nah, it's it, like it's its thing. We're going to let it be, which everybody says during a massive acquisition, as we know. So I everyone's going to keep their job. Yeah, it's fine. We like making vinyl. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's a weird one. Weird. Imagine one. that being a money move, though. Yeah, you gotta wonder. Like, I mean, I suppose there's it, it probably is a smart thing because it's like they have to probably do very little to keep. Because when you look at Bandcamp's format and it's very low brow, like simple, yep. simple pages. So there's not like a ton of overhead and infrastructure there, other than, you know, obviously there's <clears throat> underlying user accounts and like payment systems and stuff. But yeah, it's just. Probably good in the sense that they can just kick back and collect royalties from, not royalties, but they're collecting, you know, fractions of transactions on, because is there a bigger one? SoundCloud is big, but I don't know if SoundCloud's bigger than Bandcamp. Probably not. SoundCloud's very niche, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like I, lately I've been hearing more SoundCloud than Bandcamp. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. What do I know? It's probably one of those things where, you know, when interest rates are lower than inflation, then you need to put your money. If you've got money sitting around, you got to put it in something other than well, you're just sitting around. That's when you, <laughs> you invest know? in the STEM player, um, obviously. <laughs> that's where you invest. Or, you know, Amico startup. Yeah. I wanted to put that on here as a topic, but that's just gotten sadder since the last time we brought mm. it up. Mm-hmm. I think we can just let that thing bury itself. Yeah. yeah. Let there, it was, die. there was some other sad news, which Andy pointed to over on the switch front. Oh yeah. Also because of what's going on in Ukraine, Nintendo decided to once again, delay advanced wars. Um, which is, I, I, I don't get that. Like it's a bigger disconnect than, I think what they're thinking it would be, but right. It's not like it's like we're putting on a plane game that lets you fly into the trade centers after nine 11. I mean, you yeah. know what I mean? It's not. If I it's, remember right. One of the characters is kind of Russian though. So that might be. Yeah. I guess I could come off as insensitive. I didn't realize that that was the, I didn't realize the, the global undertones was the reason why I thought they just maybe couldn't get it done because there was something going on in conjunction, but it is literally just the tone of the world stage right now that is causing yeah. the delay. Huh. Yeah, but what would you see on on shelves and on Game Pass in 2020? The game pandemic, right? Right. <laughs> like they were like, yes, finally we're gonna make some money again. <laughs> Put it back out there. That's weird. And it's a bummer because like that one's already gotten delayed once, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm actually excited for it because I never played those original games. So like this was like, a, yeah, I'm going to pick that up sort of thing, but sell wait. I don't know if you'd like that. No, you don't think? I don't know. I, I mean, it, 
I guess you do like Military Madness, which is yeah, that's I was gonna say. I was thing. just gonna ask you how much like Military Madness is this? Because if it's similar, mm-hmm. I like. Yeah. Which Military Madness is more adequate? Actually. Hmm. It's true. Watching this YouTube video from this guy. I don't know. You guys ever see these like YouTube channels where people do this? Like I've seen it a few times where it's like, I'm diagnosed with a cancer that's beyond treatment. So like, here's me going hard before I'm dead because I can't do anything about it. Anyway, there's, there's I found another one of these channels because it tied into <laughs> some of the stuff I've been watching on YouTube. And it's like this guy who's in this situation and he's just like, war in Ukraine. Yep. I'm going over there. Like we're doing it. And like, I watched a video and it was just, him and the guy he was traveling with the travel companion, they ended up like in a position where they had to use cryptocurrency to finally buy a car because every other means of transportation was gone. And all forms of like currency had been locked down and like were unavailable. Cause like there's no ATMs, banks were closed. And then they ended up in some small Ukrainian town in the middle of the night. And they were, their plan was to sleep in the car, but the air raid sirens kept going on. So it was just them running back and forth in the darkness, like trying to hide between like bridges and like buildings. I'm just like, what are you, what are you accomplishing here? Like the cancer's not killing you fast enough. You're like headlong into a fricking war. It was unbelievable. It looked like the, it looked like the day from hell and like how he kept like filming it all. I don't know. Just, I mean, think of how disrespectful that is for the people that live there too, where it's like, oh, I'm a YouTube guy and I came here just to, for the thrill of it. And these people are, their yeah. lives are being destroyed. And I don't know if know? it was like under, like they were there to like help or just showcase a day in the life or what the deal. I mean, obviously this guy's whole channel is I'm just experiencing the world as I can, but yeah, I, I thought the same thing, especially cause they were like running through residential neighborhoods at like God knows what time at night. Like it was weird. Right. Was uh, I saw actually right before this Sky News on YouTube, um, they're covering kind of the the Russia Ukraine side stuff like that, and um, they actually drove and the camera was running. They drove into an ambush, oh. and they thought it was an accident. Like the Ukrainians thought, you know, oh, it it's a Russian enemy of some sort in this little like Kia, whatever tiny car, they just come busting out. And so they just bullet hell all over their car. Um, and they're like opening the door and things silent down, like quiet down and they open the door and they're yelling like journalists, we're journalists, we're journalists. And then you hear just this silence and then all of a sudden, like everyone's just <laughs> going after journalists. And oh. I mean, they were just terrified and they got, they were wearing their bulletproof vests and a couple guys got hits and wow. like, what a mess. And just that they're, they don't give a rip, you know, Russia doesn't give a rip about well, no. anything. I saw the news report from this afternoon where they did an airstrike on a maternity ward. Yeah. Uh, they openly mm-hmm. targeted and attacked one today. Like that's fucked. Yep. Like that's, yep. that's a war crime. You don't do that after a ceasefire. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Ceasefire my ass. Oh. It's pretty bad. Well, and that's the I'd like to thing take that Nintendo 64 controller right up. Putin's yeah. poop. You'd show them where you're. You'd show them where you're putting it. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting it up in your putting uh, It is super sad though, and yeah. it's just disgusting. Like we live in like the age of where this shouldn't be happening. I don't know. There's a lot to be upset about, and there's a lot more we could do. But it's like it's such a divisive conflict too. Is you know he's he's waiting for someone. He's waiting for someone to make the move, and then it's all hell unleashed. And then China's mm-hmm. involved, and then we're aft. And I don't know. Can we just not shoot people anymore? Like in this day and age, like plus, like Europe's been through enough, right? Like Europe doesn't need another land war. <clears throat> 
Nobody I think of even some, you know, just some people that were connected to um, in church stuff that uh, they're over there, or have a team over there. And it was that thing like, oh, they're, they're missionaries. So it's, they'll be okay. Like they'll, they'll mm-hmm. get to wherever and just we're getting messages and stuff like that, that they're surrounded and I was like, ah, we'll be okay. You know, they, they get out, they can get out. And then it's just, it got like really serious, really fast where, oh no, like anybody's getting targeted. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're in that country, they don't give a rip. And that's just so weird. It's so, yeah. I don't think it it's helps so like, foreign. when you watch like some of the people like, the YouTube people who were over there from the Ukrainian side, well, even the Russian side. Like, I don't think it helped that the people in those communities largely downplayed, like a lot of the speculation is just like Western media propaganda. And like, Oh God, no, it's never actually going to turn into Like, that's not a thing. You know, those, those, those people in those communities and in Ukraine, like they never actually believed that this was going to happen. Right. So I think there was a lot of like, hmm. I, not that they weren't aware, but like it seemed like a lot of the citizens were just kind of blindsided because they didn't believe oh. that they would actually take this measure. That was so foreign to my son when, you know, I was kind of explaining what was going on. And he's like, so there's a war happening and people are just walking around the town and like doing their normal life. <laughs> like, I guess so. <laughs> like they just didn't seem like they were overly concerned about. What yeah. was about to unfold? You watch that like Balden Bankrupt, which, you know, pretty famous YouTuber spends all his time in like the Soviet satellite countries. And like he kind of approached it almost too. you know, those videos leading up to that, like kind of mockingly, like, oh, I'm leaving. I'm crossing the border from Poland into the Ukraine. And he's walking around talking to people as he's getting across the border. Like, oh, is there a war yet? Russia here? They're like, no, no, it's fine. You know, so it was like this kind of lighthearted thing. And then next thing you know, his upload, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm effed. Like I'm, I'm stuck in Kiev. Like sh- we're getting shelled right now. And it's like, well, yeah. What does he Jeez. kind of expect? Oh my and like, gosh. And his, his, like, uh, man, his video, um, obviously like you watch those YouTube videos and like, you don't really know the person behind the camera, but like he really kind of came off as like a stand, uh, uh, stand, uh, up kind of dude. Like he, um, He's got that other buddy that he travels with who does YouTube and like Bald's channel. They didn't film, they filmed the journey, but they didn't film much of what he was doing. And his buddy was filming a lot of it. And, you know, Bald and bankrupts handing out money to like grannies who are stranded at the train station. He, he gets on the train, stops, turns around and helps everyone else up on board, like grabs their luggage, like pulls people up, helps fill the train. Like just, it seemed like it was pretty incredible. Like in the, in the situation, his buddy, of course, couldn't put down the camera to do the same, but <laughs> yeah, he took the handout food rations from like the, the Polish once they got across the U- Ukrainian border. But yeah, it's, it, you watch those videos and like, it is, <clears throat> it's reminiscent of all of those movies and clips that we saw as kids growing up, like showing, you know, family saying goodbye to their kids at train stations during world war two. And like mm-hmm. the fact that we're, we're seeing that in, in this day and age is awful. And those people shouldn't have to put up with that. It sucks. For ultimately no reason, pretty much whatsoever. For um, uh, a psychopath's no ego. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, we got, we turned into a news channel guys. Yeah. I, I can ring this back in though. Uh, oh, <laughs> fix please it. Please tell Force us correct. how this so, is going to happen. So it's uh, it, it's kind of weird though that we're in this you know war and like the Ukrainian government is so active on Twitter and social media and you know they're reaching out to PlayStation, Xbox, and being like, hey, can you can you just shut down Russia for us? Just like you know. <laughs> Don't do, don't allow them on PlayStation Network anymore. It's like, yeah. this is a weird, this is like a warfare that we've never seen before. It's oh, like, it's genius. Yeah. Like you take away the, mo- you take the everyday conveniences away from 
Russian citizens who don't want this in vast majorities mm-hmm. and are horrible. Like their, their lives at this point, like are irreparably damaged. Like that economy is not coming back anytime soon. Like, and yeah, maybe you can get them to revolt. Like it's, it's a great tactic and they're, they're Just a whole bunch of nerds come running yeah. out. They took our stuff. Their president yep. is incredible like that the way he's rallied people and the decisions yeah. he's made mm-hmm. and like the call for hackers like it's it's an, it's on you know you no one's ever seen anything like it it's kind of incredible but yeah i mean to your point what they've had i think virtually every every platform has pulled sales right and shut down their stores um activision Pretty blizzard much. has said they're done um, you know, along with like, everybody, right? Like, did you see the videos? services are all, yeah. Yeah, did you see the videos of IKEA in Russia? Because they announced that they were pulling out. Oh my God, it's like Black Friday. Like, every Russian ran to IKEA. Yeah, they opened the IKEA door and it was like, boom, hundreds of people fighting over boxes because they're like, I'll oh never gosh. get these cube stackers again. Like, until somebody opens Wait. like the ripoff version. But, I mean, it sucks. Like, you feel bad for, you feel bad for those citizens too, but you know, I think they're understanding that, you know, this is what happens when somebody goes rogue like that. I wonder what's in your, like if you are brainwashed into believing whatever <laughs> their state media is telling you yeah, and then you see McDonald's is closed and then you see you can't get right. Netflix. And then you like, at what point does the, do you, does the lever go the other way and say, you know what? Maybe we're the bad guys, you know? Well, I was, so I was reading this article the other day where like, you know, obviously there's very close ties between Ukraine and Russia. And I was reading some of these stories from these, these people who are in Ukraine, like texting and calling their parents and saying like, oh, we're being bombed. Like they're shelling our neighborhoods and, you know, parents telling their kids and laughing at them and like, oh no, that would never happen. He's there to liberate you. He would, never, you know, and it's just like, these people are just, mind blown lives upended so because like yeah. you, you can't recover from that right like if i call if if i had somebody with a gun at my head and i called my mom and said like hey this guy's gonna kill me and they're like haha no nah, that's not a thing like that relationship's kind of over right and it just it just shows you like the depths of the state media and propaganda and filtering that you know these the generational divide i guess i would say right because it's it's definitely i think if you're I don't know what 40 and younger in Russia, you're probably with it enough to understand what's really happening. But like the depths to that, like is I would scary. Say it was something similar that happened here. Right. <laughs> Recently. Yeah. That was the one quote I heard too, was like the one lady called her mom and was like, well, well, yeah. And the whole yeah the situation, but the one quote I heard was, um, she's like, well, yeah, they're killing civilians. And the mother just was like, Ha ha, yeah, that's what Ukrainians did too. And they killed Russians when they fought back when because they were fighting over that area uh in the southern part. But yeah, I I, I don't know. The it, it definitely shows you that like how successful propaganda and lies can be when given proper channels, which yeah, as you mentioned, has done irreparable irreparable damage. And that's why we're sitting in a country that has a gross amount of people applauding Putin still, which is yeah, I, I don't know how there's a pro Putin side to any of this, and that's effed, but that's where we sit. Mm-hmm. All right, this is all super depressing. Let's uh, let's uh, we're a gaming podcast. Let's let's end on a happy happy note, I guess. Uh, uh, and I think no, I, no. there's I, people that burned Super Mario Brothers one, yeah, or you know, all of those tragedy. things. So. I think as a podcast, we can collectively agree that our hearts go out to all those people and we're, we're rooting for Ukraine. Um, but we did get an email. Oh, we got an email, oh, email, it. email. So this is from I the sang. truth again, um, which as we mentioned from our friends over at the Geekade network. Um, yeah. He'd listened to our last episode and he's, I'm just going to throw this out there. It was a, um, Fun little segment. Um, this is the nineties trivia that he's referring to. They said he found himself audibly shouting out the answers as well with us, yes. uh, which I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to say like, it was funny listening to that back. Cause I don't know if it was like the slight difference in like 
the editing delay or just like the clarity of like hearing each of you distinctly. Some of those answers where I was like, Oh, I can't tell. It was very clear who said it first. And I sounded yeah, it was like always a, me. I sounded like a moron, but yeah, it was, it was a fun listen. Um, and he said in some cases, even before Biff and Andy, he was just throwing stuff out. But he got beanie babies. As soon as I said stuffed animal, which is impressive. <laughs> Uh, and he also got full house as soon as the actual question was finished before I had to yeah. add all the lyrics, which I was a little disappointed in you too. I will say, mm. I know uh, he says, what did I say? Step by step. That was yeah. the first thing I went to. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. He says also as an RL, better than RL Stein question um, threw me off for sure. He said he thought it was night of the limit dummy, which is also a Biff thought um, since it was the first appearance of slappy and one of his first big characters. Um, but it was apparently actually Werewolf of Fever Swamp, which is the one I was trying to remember and reference. Um, and I distinctly remember getting that one for some reason, because I remember getting into that in like the first three books right as they came out. And then it was like kind of before that whole scholastic school book fair, like you'd get like the five books in a bundle sort of thing. Um, I was pretty adamant on R.L. Stein stuff, like first 30 books I definitely read. Anyway, back to his email. <clears throat> so it was apparently Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Uh, he said he had uh, a made-for-TV movie of that one growing up, which I think I have seen as well. Um, and I used to, as a kid, that shit used to give me nightmares, which understandable. Those books kind of gave me nightmares, to be honest. Mm. Um, Just the covers did. It was never, because I never read them. It was the covers that I was like, <laughs> can't read this. <laughs> Too scary. scary. Uh, and then he says, uh, he's like, he doesn't know what else to keep talking about because he's still currently listening. He was typing this out as he was in, um, yes. going through the episode. So, as always, he says he looks forward to more. So, thank you, awesome. sir, for listening. And uh, I'm glad you had fun screaming along to our trivia thing. I realized that I was a terrible host, too, after li- listening to that trivia thing, because I never, like, clearly designated what the actual answer was on most of those questions. I would just be like, I don't know who got it. who got Because you guys weren't enunciating. It was like, Hurra! I'm like, what? <laughs> what now? Oh, I loved it. It was the one thing that I was good at on this show, finally. Yeah, we just have to do more uh, trivia where it's not based on video games, because you did crush that. It was yeah. Yeah. Both of you, though, had answers that I'm like, I don't know how you got there. Like, I read four words, and you're both, like, just spewing out the correct (laughs) answers, so. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It was a fun one. We'll have to do, I'll have to do another one. I'll have to do, like, maybe, like, an 80s trivia or something, or early 2000s one. Oof, that getting later will, will be harder. <laughs> you know, the 2000s, I'll be like, oh, I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah. Some of that stuff I've like purposely removed from my head. <laughs> Permanently uh, erased. I should find an adult swim trivia and then Biff can read the questions. Uh, I never Andy, watched that. Andy and I will yeah. go at it. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Because Andy and I are both pretty. I yet deep to host something. Adult swim connoisseurs, I think. Mm hmm. South Park or something. Yeah. Yeah, like Aqua Teen and Boondocks and stuff. Squid Billies. I hate that shit. <laughs> I hate that stuff so much. Super Jail. That's a good one. Metalocalypse. Mm. I have no idea what you're even saying. So <laughs> th- there's one uh, called uh, Joe Pair Talks With You. I don't know if you've seen that, but that it is, it is, it's an adult swim show, but it is the most not adult swim show ever. It is, I don't even know how to describe it. It is basically the most saccharine, slow paced show ever. It's like Mr. Rogers, but funny kind of, Okay, it's, it's really good. Oh yeah. I think I might've seen some of that. Is that on HBO max? You know? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it is now. Yeah. I've been going back and making my kids watch Tom goes to mayor. And we got, oh gosh, that one's and, good. And that is it that opening episode or the second one where they do like the bear trap thing with tenacious D <laughs> my kids like, why are they, why are they doing this to put bear traps everywhere? I'm like, that's the joke. Like the joke is it's killing kids instead of protecting them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The mayor's an awful person. <laughs> and then I made my kid uh, like, I like that one scene that has always stuck with me too, where he's like at that restaurant. He's like, Hey, have you tried the spagat? 
It's like they put on <laughs> Mara Nara, and I, I made my kid watch that. And I was like, Ryder, I'm listening to this. This is the best, and I'm dying like in tears. And he watches that, and he just looks at me like I am the dumbest person he's ever seen in his entire <laughs> life. But it didn't phase me at all. I was still just crying, laughing. So. I, to this day, every time we have like spaghetti, I'm like, would you like some more marinara? Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. Jeff's like, I have no idea what marinara is. No idea. Marinara. I'll take you out. It's metallic. That's good. I'm going to take this podcast out. How about I do that? Not before mm-hmm. you sample my linguine. It sounds so <laughs> weird, but... I'd be into it. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for the email. Should have said Penne. <laughs> Pen, <laughs> Penne. Angel hair. Keep them coming. <laughs> Keep the emails coming. Keep the emails coming. Really appreciate the, the conversations and the questions and the encouragement. We're thankful for that. Uh, make sure you're following us on all of our social media on Twitter and Facebook and all of those good things. And you can find all things Weekend Rental at Weekend Podcast. Dot com as always friends be kind rewind spagat the wizard is so bad go ukraine yeah